All right, I got this engine back out of here. So we can get to work on some of the stuff that I needed to work on uh, once the transmission was out of here. And uh, we can also finish cutting and, you know, welding and closing up this transmission tunnel now that the transmission's gone. You know, I didn't want to weld while it was in there and throw sparks all over the transmission. So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that, sealing up this floor again and, you know, putting the carpet back in and all that. But for right now, I think I'm gonna work on a couple of things up here. Um, the first is the wiring harness. And there's a handful of wires here, you know, stuff to run the old carburetor and the old ignition system. And uh, this stuff's for the old uh, alternator. And since I'm running a standalone harness for this uh, Hemi, then I won't really need a lot of this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to have to keep uh, wires for like lights and the horns and things like that. There really aren't too many actually to run the old engine, you know, just a few from like the distributor and, you know, whatever, a few ignition things. But uh, I'd like to remove those guys just to clean this up in here a little bit. The other thing I got to work on is the braking system. Um, and in particular, I got to figure out this clutch pedal placement. So I have a bigger brake booster. This is the nine inch brake booster. And, uh, and it interferes with where I want to place the clutch pedal um, or the clutch master cylinder. So, you know, as it stands now, this master cylinder is going to have to land uh, somewhere, let's see if I can move this, somewhere uh, near the bottom corner down here. And of course, that's just gonna hit that brake booster, but they do make smaller brake boosters. So, you know, there's a couple of solutions for this guy. One is a smaller, but a dual brake booster, as they call them. It shouldn't sacrifice too much braking power, but um, it'll make it, you know, a smaller diameter, but it will push it forward a little bit, which is okay because I have room there. The other option is to try and use like a brake booster bracket. Um, then you're running linkage between the pedal and the brake booster. And, you know, and I don't want to have to complicate this. So I'm just going to try a smaller brake booster and I'm hoping for a dual eight inch brake booster. They say that provides almost the same amount of stopping power as the single nine inch, which is what I have now. But the first one I'm going to try because I'm pretty much positive it's going to fit is the dual seven. That guy probably will have a little less uh, boosting power or whatever, make it a little bit harder pedal. Um, which, you know, may or may not be a bad thing. Yeah, we'll see how that guy fits in there first. And if it seems like I'm, I'm going to have extra room, then maybe I'll try and uh, bump it up to the 8-inch. All right, let's get working on that wiring harness. I'm going to strip this whole thing out and uh, pretty much eliminate any wire I don't need. All right, got this uh, wiring harness pretty thoroughly stripped down. Got all that ancient, uh, crispy electrical tape peeled off of all these wires so I can figure out what I need and what I don't need. And there's a lot here that I'm not gonna need to use. Things involving the old alternator and the ignition system and the old air conditioning pump, stuff like that. So I got my wiring harness here and um, it's strange actually, it seems like my car has a, a Hemi wiring harness as opposed to like a standard wiring harness. Um, it's definitely not a Hemi car, I can tell you that much. So somebody must have swapped this out at some point, I guess. So um, that's kind of neat, I guess. But uh, anyway, so I think my plan here is to um, just unpin these wires that I'm not going to need. So, you know, they plug into this um, firewall sort of connector thing here. And, uh, and then I found out you can actually... So this green wire, for instance, here, this one is an old oil pressure sensor. So you can just grab in there, squeeze that guy, 
and push down. All right, there we go. That's it. Okay, I have the wiring harness all uh, taken apart and stripped out and, you know, ready to remove all of the wires I'm not going to need. Um, I do want to take out every wire that I can, you know, just to simplify things. Um, there's going to be enough wires, you know, running the Hemi, so... So there were sort of two routes I could have taken with this, and, uh, you know, both have their sort of pros and cons. My first option would have been to um, try and actually use this factory harness and computer. Supposedly the, you know, the 2004, 2005, like that sort of year range truck, uh, computers, ECUs, or whatever, are the easiest to to hack or to swap or whatever to to break into and to tune, supposedly. So that um, so it was pretty tempting. I mean, that's the computer I have. So, but uh, you know, that doesn't mean it's necessarily easy either. You know, it's still challenging, and you have to buy expensive, you know, software and connectors or whatever. Or maybe you can send it into a company. But after doing the math, you know, and kind of figuring out how much it was going to cost to modify the stock harness and unlock the ECU. Um, I kind of figured it was about the same amount as uh, option number two, and that's the aftermarket full standalone kit from Holly. Um, and, uh, you know, it's supposed to self-tune. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to self-tune. There is a lot of good information out there to help you tune. It looks pretty complicated, and I've never, you know, tried it before. But I figured it at least gives me an opportunity to try self-tuning, and, you know, I can always bring it into a shop and have it tuned later if I need to. So here's the Holly Terminator X wiring harness and computer. So it looks like we have a couple of uh, small harnesses here. This guy looks like a uh, fuel injector harness. Um, this thing's really nicely labeled, so that's good. Yep, injectors, there you go. And then we have the um, cylinder, it says cylinder markings on there. I bet this is the coil harness. I'm sure that's what this is, coil harness. Okay, um, this guy looks like the main wiring harness all bundled together and uh, Got another wiring harness. This guy is looks like connect to battery terminal. That looks like the big yeah. That's like a big power harness, the main harness there. And there's a looks like a relay or a fuse or something. Um, we've got a white box. I don't know what this is for. Uh, we'll open that in a minute. And here's that uh, beautiful computer right there. This is the Terminator X computer. Um, it's pretty small. That's good. It's going to be easy to fit under that dash. Um, and I know that this guy is a um, air pressure sensor, absolute, uh, what do you call it, manifold, absolute pressure sensor, whatever. Um, I believe you got to run this an actual air tube through the firewall and into the intake manifold because the Hemis don't, or at least the Hemi that I have, does not have a mass airflow sensor. So that's kind of the, the way they gauge the air intake is through that sensor right there, or through that tube, I guess. All right, um, we have another harness here. I don't know what that is. That, I think they call this the loose wire harness where you can plug in, you know, things like fans and stuff. Um, I'm guessing it could be something else. We'll figure that out. And we have what's this big thing. Oh, this is my fuel tube. This is unrelated. I just had that in the box. That's for my, uh, my engine fuel. I'll put that aside. We'll get to that later. And uh, got a got an O2 sensor, cool. Nice of them to give you that included in your O2 sensor. Um, some adapters possibly for the O2. O2 sensor adapter, I don't know. And this guy's pretty cool. This is like a little, um, this guy's like a screen uh, for I think like quick tuning and adjustments you can keep in your car. Um, uh, I'll have to find a cool place to mount that. That'll be pretty cool to be able to pull out a little LCD screen here. Let's... <laughs> it's hard to do one-handed here. There we go. Um, yeah, it'll be cool to have a little LCD screen I can, like, you know, make adjustments, I guess, or maybe diagnose if I ever break down, you know, knock on wood. Hopefully I don't break down often, but this might come in handy. And uh, that's it. Oh, let's check out what's in this thing. All right, these guys are called ignition coil drivers. Um, okay, so it's, you know, it's fairly heavy. It's like, a, I guess, I don't know. I guess it drives the ignition coil. That's my guess. Um, I guess it just mounts somewhere. Maybe I mount that to the firewall and run coils there or something. Maybe it provides the charge or something. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay. All right, well, we'll figure that out. And that's it. That's everything.
So I suppose this main harness here, that's gonna have to wire into the battery. I can see right off the bat, there's like a crank sensor here, power tap. Um, hmm. Okay, idle air control. Cool, okay, it's all marked pretty well. I guess that thing, that this guy, this big guy is the one that's gonna have to run through the firewall. So let's, uh, let's see what we're dealing with here. Okay, looks like all of this stuff here is kind of its own separate thing and contained, I'm gonna contain this under the dashboard, so inside the car. And uh, I can tell that it looks like these ignition things kind of just plug in and out there. Other than that, it's pretty, pretty straightforward over here. These are probably the few things, the few links I'll have to make to the old wiring harness or, you know, the ignition system. I've got a relay here, relay here, a fuse here. And these are the coil guys right here, these four coils. Cool, okay, that's pretty simple. Um, and then we got this, looks like this power out here. So let's plug that puppy right there. All right. So it looks like this is what I'm gonna need to pass through the firewall here. Um, I think they there is some instructions and they call for like a two inch hole or whatever. And then, you know, you wanna put a grommet in there to seal this guy, so. Um, I wonder which side I should put this on, you know, driver's side or passenger side. I'm thinking passenger side because there's a lot less stuff there, you know, no pedals and no. You know, let's go take a look. So I'm thinking right off the bat, it seems like passenger side might be better. Um, there's less stuff over here. No brake stuff, no steering, no pedals. Um, but then again, I'm going to have some air conditioning stuff over here. So there's a lot of room underneath the dashboard over on this side in this area. And that's because I don't have any sort of air conditioning or, or even like a heater, you know, everything's just blocked off and removed. So, um, gosh, I really won't know until I get that box in there. Um, but uh, I guess we'll get to that point when we get to it. Oh, so one sort of important note about this wiring harness um, is about the, the one missing connector on this guy. And that's the alternator control connector. Um, there is no alternator plug on this harness. Um, I guess they just, it's just not something that they chose to control with the Holly computer. And, and it took me a while to actually figure out how to deal with that. I, um, I did a lot of research and it turns out that, uh, the Hemi and, and actually pretty much all new cars, um, the alternator voltage regulator is controlled by the factory computer. So this can mean a couple of things depending on which type of alternator you have, whether it's um, a computer basically giving the alternator like a, a field signal and sort of telling the alternator to turn on or off or you know start working and then stop working, or if it's actually sending a, a message to the alternator, like a computer message. They call it a PMW or P, PWM, Pulse Wave Modulation. Uh, I uh, don't know exactly what that means. That's kind of just a noise I'm making right now. But uh, I know that it's a it's a computer signal. It's not a it's not an actual you know turn on or off um, sort of standard regulator signal. So um, you kind of have to have the computer to run the alternator. And I thought I had made a mistake uh, by going with this uh, setup because you know how am I going to run the alternator? And you know I don't want to have to like adapt some old school alt alternator on this thing. And you know because then you know you start throwing belts because the adapter's off by just a little bit. And um, I've been down that road, and I hate having to. I know I've like I always say this, but I hate having to move away from stock wherever possible. Um, in particular, when things line up with each other, um, you know, I've always had trouble when I'm trying to line something up with stock and you have this like little machined piece or whatever, uh, you know, I mean, not to mention you have to pay hundreds of dollars just for these stupid like machined, um, these machine brackets. And um, I had to do this with an air conditioner compressor that I had to, you know, adapt to fit the engine. And, you know, I had to find a custom length uh, serpentine belt and, you know, they promised this is the perfect, you know, alignment for this air conditioner, but it just, it was off by just a little bit. And it's like, boom, that's enough to throw belts. And I was like shredding belts and it's, it's a nightmare. I'm like, I'm traumatized by this experience. So um, I really wanted to keep that stock alternator. I'm going to run the stock serpentine belt. Um, I am going to run the stock air conditioning compressor. 
So I found some information about how you can run these stock alternators. So take a look at this guy. This is my stock alternator and um, I had it converted into what's called a one wire alternator. Um, now you can just go and buy a one wire alternator from some of these Hemi swap places. Um, it's kind of expensive and I'm, they looked like the stock alternator. So that's probably a good choice if you don't have an alternator. Um, basically, this was the connector, which connects to the factory Dodge harness, whatever, the factory computer. And it uses the PWM signal to control the alternator. And they say that the voltage regulator is built into the Dodge computers. Basically, the computer regulates the voltage and it actually itself does everything to turn this on and off. There is no internal voltage regulator from what I understand and from what the alternator guy told me. So I brought this one into a shop. This was a recommendation that I saw people do, and that's to just find an alternator shop. Um, I actually didn't know they existed until now. Um, and, you know, I, I searched alternators on Google Maps and sure enough, when I went in there, it was like mostly, you know, giant starters, probably for like boats and for big diesels. So in that case, you know, for car stuff, it's not really often that you would rebuild this. You would just go to the auto parts store and buy a remanufactured one, you know, trade in your core. Um, but maybe if you have like really expensive giant parts for specialized uh, equipment, that's the place to go. And I told them my problem and they said, no worries, we do this all the time. Um, we just need to slap on a voltage regulator, which is this guy right here. And uh, he said that they just tap it into somewhere in the alternator and there you go. Um, I considered doing this myself. I even took this back cover off, but I chickened out because, you know, it's really, uh, you got to know what you're doing in there and I didn't want to mess anything up. So um, I figure, you know, if this ever goes out on me, I can maybe uh, reverse engineer what the heck they did, you know, take this thing apart and figure out where the wires go. And then I can probably resolder it the same way to a new alternator. So I was uh, kind of paying for a little bit of a uh, knowledge here too, I think, but I just plug this into the battery, like a big um, heavy gauge, like a four gauge or a six gauge cable straight to the battery. And it, you know, is a self-contained unit. It regulates its own voltage. You know, it detects when the voltage drops down and it'll um, kick it up and all that or, or however that works. And I don't need to plug in any other wires, you know, ignition or otherwise, because this one um, is called a self-exciting alternator, um, which I thought was a pretty cool name, self-exciting. And uh, it kind of just fires up um, on its own, you know. All right, so let's get back into this wiring stuff here. I've already stripped out a couple of these wires here and I want to figure out what the rest of these do and uh, and remove what I'm sure I don't need. I got to say, this is my favorite part of uh, working on the car. I know people usually uh, dread doing the wiring, but I love it. All right, let's get to this. All right, I actually got this thing uh, stripped out pretty thoroughly. I think that's all of the wires that I'm gonna need. I was able to take out quite a few. I mean, there's really not that much left. Um, we got this pack of wires here, which goes to the front lights, you know, that's like headlights and turn signals, all that stuff. And I think that's it. I think we've eliminated all of the engine bay wires.